Hello, this is John Miller, the creator of The Rest of Everest. I think I can safely say that this show is, without a doubt, the most in-depth look into the entire experience of what it takes to climb Everest, as well as some other peaks throughout the Himalayas. But all of the events in the series are shown in chronological order, so if you're new to the show, please go all the way back to episode 000 and watch everything in order. That's truly the best way to enjoy it. Thanks. This is the Rest of Everest video podcast, an almost unabridged expedition experience. Episode 135, Real Surreal Reality. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Rest of Everest. I'm John Miller. This is, uh, as I promoted last week, another of the Base Camp episodes. I'm not exactly sure how many we have left. We have at least one left after this episode, but since I have not edited any more episodes um, for commentary, I can't tell you exactly how many. Um, but this week, we are going <laughs> to... The, the third and final installment in the John John Morning Show uh, from our tent, and this week gets a little bit wacky. I was, gonna, I was talking to uh, the, com- the commentators on this week, which is... Uh, Steve Beattie, um, Tilo, Jeff, Chris, John Coleman, and myself. Steve Wolf is joining us as well. Nice to have you on this week as well, Steve. Um, but I was telling them that um, people who are watching the show and did not heed my warning to go back to episode 000 and watch all the way forward. So those of you who just found the show and are watching this as your very first episode are going to be thinking what is this what what is this podcast all about but those of you who have watched from the very beginning and have you know watched me through all of my trials and tribulations and really know the show and and stuff um as john coleman did (laughs) when we were at base camp you may be finding yourself laughing out loud so i'll leave that up to you guys to decide where in the middle you fall but uh I'd say let's head back up to base camp and um, remember those of you who weren't there on the commentary, feel free to ask us about anything because there, you know, maybe some stuff that that the, the, the four of us who were there take for granted now and um, you might have a question about it that might make us think about it and answer, answer it, which we'll be answering it for the entire audience. So in any case, here we go. I haven't actually seen my hair in like two weeks. <laughs> I'm glad I got it cut in Kathmandu. But it's also nice because you always wear a hat out here <laughs> almost all the time. <sighs> yeah, I, I don't really want to see what mine looks like. <laughs> I see what yours looks like either. I think what Andy like Wolf was tell. happiest that uh, hats were worn all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of her rules. <laughs> yeah. What was strange is how like uncommon even like a mirror was up there. Yep. Yeah, so I think we went like about a week and a half without even seeing what I look like. Mm-hmm. Right, so we're Which is for the best. Ready to tent. We packed up <laughs> most of our gear, but I don't want to let the hypoxic state here that we're in <laughs> make us forget to put sunblock on because sunblock is key out here. <sighs> If you don't have it, you die. <laughs> you get so burnt. Unreal. Push your nose. Yeah, this is where we get a little bit wacky. But yeah, sunscreen is crucial out there. Crucial. Oh, that's what that stuff was. I saw that in the back of your pack all freaking day. <laughs> but I never got close enough to it to read what it was. It's funny, for some reason in my head, I can tell this is from the altitude. I was thinking that was like powdered graphite. Like if you had a squeaky door hinge or something. Huh. Put oh my god, that's cold. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually my suntan lotion that was oh, on okay. the back of my pack. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny. <laughs> of course it wasn't powdered graphite. Why the hell would you bring powdered graphite up here? Unless you're not telling us something. No. Got some kind of world domination plan nothing of the sort well if you did you certainly wouldn't be telling me about it this so is true i'm just gonna have to believe you tell me the truth but i'm gonna have my eye on you john i just might be a troublemaker <laughs> hey that's my job <laughs> <laughs> And there's a lot of cross dissolves in this because I edited it way down. 
This is a tape that will need to be edited way down. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. There's only so much of the experience people really care about. Yeah, I think this part perhaps not so much. Episode 173, Sunscreen. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Rest of Everest, I'm John Miller. <laughs> Today I'm joined by John Coleman out in Ohio. How you doing, John? I'm doing good, how are you, John? <laughs> I'm doing well. So today's episode is going to be a little bit exciting. I know a lot of you have been really curious about just how do they keep from getting sunburned. Well, in this episode we're going to give you all the information. We're going to show you the entire process of keeping yourself from getting sunburned while visiting Mount Everest. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll cut to the rest of our Everest is downloaded all over the world every day. <laughs> if you enjoy watching, we'd like to show your support. <laughs> Please visit my website. <laughs> that may not be true after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Please make a monthly donation. That'd be great. Super. A monthly donation of $10 or more will keep me in tubes of sunscreen for the rest of my life. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those, you're filming this? Really? Kind of moments? <laughs> really? Really? You're filming this? <laughs> what, was I, what was I saying that to? Was it some guys? It was some guys. Yeah, I don't know. Some remember. local guys. Like, really? I think when I was filming the tire really being repaired in tie my shoe? Really? season two. <laughs> yes, how do you tie your shoe in Nepal? <laughs> <laughs> do you cross the laces left over right or right over left? I need to know. <laughs> the world <laughs> the, needs to know. The viewers just need to know. <laughs> Scintillating footage. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's so surreal. It's so <laughs> it's so surreal being up here. John, I, John and I—I I know you can't see him. He's not on camera right now. But he and I have been <laughs> he and I have been sharing tent here for ten days now. I think something like that. Almost ten days. And uh, <laughs> like uh, I know him through emails and stuff because he's. He's written me just as a fan of the show. <laughs> and then he, uh, he was the, f John was our registration number one when we opened it. And, uh, here, see if I can get him in the shot too. <laughs> there you are. There I am, kind of. <laughs> I know you've seen him, but uh, so he was, he was registration number one. And, uh, you know, I get emails all the time saying, I feel like I know you. John, I feel like I watched all the episodes back to back. Started episode zero, worked my way forward, just like you said. And I feel like I know you. And uh, I think the truth is, I hope the truth is that, you know, you really do know me because I'm pretty much the same. <laughs> I don't think I put on any false persona when I'm doing the show. But <clears throat> So John has already known me. And... Uh, <laughs> he's watching the show and uh, watching the show enough to know some of the things I say every single time or <laughs> like you filming this really <laughs> and that just kind of flips me out because <laughs> I don't get to meet viewers very often <laughs> I don't get to talk to them very often when I do and they say something like that it's just like wow they really did watch the show and it's also like wow yeah I, I guess I do say that kind of stuff a lot <laughs> But it's completely surreal. <laughs> but it's a good thing. Good times. Yeah, totally it's surreal. Equally surreal than, uh, being there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the being in a tent with. And that's how you protect yourself from the sun. <laughs> Ooh, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's se several uh, totally surreal moments in the whole trek, which is... Uh, I guess both a compliment and a threat that I'm the same in person than than I am uh, on the podcast. <laughs> well, the, you the, are the 2010 participants. That's like a, that's a you you you'll feel both uh, familiar and like um no he actually is the, like like that. <laughs> I thought it was 
by the way, that was the coolest. I think one of my favorite shots of Stan yeah. Kennedy looking like Mr. Mountain Man. All, all caps. Oh, yeah. I all love caps. that shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so from where you were camped, I know I've asked this before, but from where you were camped, how far is it really to that ice fall? To where? Yeah, we discussed this like, briefly last episode, and I think uh, I have no official information, but I think it was like a kilometer away. Oh, that far, huh? Wow. Yeah, it, it's very misleading. That's one thing. One thing that we can say, you know, for certain, there's Pomori right there, is that uh, scale is, is wacky out there. So you think everything might be really close, but it's actually, the thing you're looking at is so large that it's actually quite a bit further away. You just, your your brain doesn't compute it the same way. You're not used to seeing things so large. And it's not the hypoxia. No, it's just, just <laughs> it's not not your common environment. So there's our, our dome, and you can see all the other tents all around. Just cr craziness, all the different tents, and everyone trying to find a piece of, piece of ground there. So everyone, this is, uh, this is Pasang Dawa Sherpa. Yes. Pasang. Yeah, and uh, he was watching me videotape some of the other tents, and he asked how old I was. I told him I'm almost 35. I turned 35 in July. He asked if I was married, and I said, yes, I am married. Yes. And uh, he's married. He's been married for three years. He's 26. Yes, 26. 26. Yeah. And he has a two-year-old. Yes. And when he's not uh, trekking and bringing group, you know, helping bring groups up, yes. he is a farmer. Where are you a farmer? Of Tashindu. Tashin? Tashindu. Tashindu? Tashindu. Where's Tashindu? Yeah. Lukla. Near near Lukla? Then. Okay. Then which direction? Taxi in the Lukla, then down. Okay. For so below one hour. One hour walk below Lukla? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so about thirty miles so, away from Lukla. As always I'm <laughs> <laughs> to yeah, one sure power. show off my yeah. family pictures here. Show the uh, okay. Picture. Apple is not supposed to see that. You're using your iPhone up there. Why, why not? Because <laughs> it's yeah. not officially it allowed up there. They work great, <laughs> Apple. They do, yeah. He's, he's your speak. baby's clever? Yes. Yeah. He's, he speaks Nepali. He speaks Nepali? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, oh, he's yeah. Yeah. and Sherpa. Yes. That's great. So he yeah. already speaks two Pasan languages. Pasan Dao was such a proud father. Because Nepali and Sherpa are different. Yes. So if I say to you, Dandebat. Yes, Dandebat. That's Nepali. Nepali. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you in Sherpa is... Uh, Tuchi. Tuchi. Tuchi? Tuchi. 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 Yeah, Tuchi. 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 Yes. Tuchi. Tuchi. So, uh, and then as I understand it, Sherpa and Tibetan are a little bit the same. Yes. yes. Because the Sherpas, hundreds of years ago, they came from Tibet and they settled in the Solokumbu. Yeah, from Eastern and So Sherpa Eastern actually Tibet. means people from the East. Uh, Do you know Sherpa? What, Sherpa, the name Sherpa? Sherpa. Do you know what it means? Sherpa is. Does it mean people from, from the East? Or people from far away? Let's see here. I've got thousands of photos on here. The iPhone is great, but sometimes it's, you kind of remember to create a quick, uh, photo album of just your favorite shots, otherwise it takes forever to find them. I'm actually looking through all of Ben Clark and Josh Blutzen and Tim Clark's Annapurna 4 stuff from last year. Took thousands <laughs> yeah, I, of pictures. Why did I take those with me? Here's, I'm here not really go. sure. I think now we're back to my <laughs> One detail I just didn't go through and weed out my photo collection on my phone. My wife, she has a sister and they are the same. They're identical. Do you know identical twins? When you have you have uh, two babies at, at one time, and they look the same. Yeah. So they're they're the, they're the same. I'm curious There's, how many identical uh, twins uh, there may be in the Sherpa community one. because of its size. It's not very big. So I'll flip it here. You can see. Uh, it's hard to that see might around. be something that doesn't happen terribly often. Here. But they look Imagine very it's much rather like uncommon, yeah. My wife's an identical this twin and I am a fraternal twin. And we have to be this careful because one time we were at a restaurant or something and we, we looked at the waiter or something and said, we're married and we're, 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 we're twins. And, <laughs> and his face was like, what? 
<laughs> like, oh no 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 no! We're not twins to Is each that other. Legal? Yeah, <laughs> we, we each have a twin. Click, click, click. <laughs> but Pasang Pasang Dawa here was actually he was the one who carried my bag and the car battery. Um, every time, every time he ended up being my personal porter. Just that's just the way it worked out. <laughs> And uh, just such a sweet, just very soft-spoken man. Just really nice guy. We uh, we we hike a lot. In I live in Colorado. Have you heard of Colorado? In the United States, America. Colorado has many mountains, not this big, <laughs> but uh, so we we walk a lot. So my son, he has a special pack backpack. I can put him in it, and I can wear him on my back, and we can we can hike all the time. But your your son or daughter? Son. Son. He speaks Nepali and Sherpa. These are some of the moments that I cherish the most from these trips. So maybe the I put these in for me and not for anyone else. But I think they're just so so wonderful. This is why I go out. Here's another photo. Yeah, good. <laughs> Glasses. Yeah. Uh, sunglasses like his dad. Yes. In Colorado, I wear these all the time. So I'm teaching him to wear sunglasses to protect his eyes. Beautiful. Thank you very much. So you have uh, a two-year-old, and uh, do you like uh, what do you like more? Do you like farming or trekking? Trekking, yes. Sometimes the trekking, sometimes the climbing. Do you like farming better or trekking better? Uh, I'm trekking better. You like trekking better? Yes. Why? Uh, I will see mountain. Uh -huh. I will see uh, city. Uh -huh. and, uh, and do you have you have you must many 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 place. friends many friends along yes. the along the trekking trail? Yes. Yeah, that's nice. That's great. It's very beautiful here. Yes. Your country is. You're very beautiful, especially yes. the the areas where the Sherpa are from. Yes. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Well, nice talking to you, Pasangdawa. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Well, again, the mountains. Congratulations on your son. Mountains are a spiritual thing for them. Very good to have a. You know, Everest itself is a deity, so. You know, it, it's very different uh, than 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 a, a very we a Western view towards mountains, except for those who are just love mountains. And, you know, you feel at home in the mountains and everything. But um, plus, yeah, you see, you see constantly them seeing seeing friends on the trail, all working for different companies, and so it's a very social thing as well. Yeah. Here is the jumble of tents that is base camp. Seems like anywhere there was a flat surface, there was a tent put on it. And the flat surface has changed from year to year because <laughs> it's very active. It's on it, it's on top of the glacier itself. Mm -hmm. um, and base camp was especially large this particular year because China had closed the Tibet side, and so everybody planned their expeditions uh, for this side. I think China did open it up, but it was too late. It was it was late. Yeah, it was very late. So yeah, it was it was very large uh, this year. Plus, Russell Bryce had a um, a team on this side, which he's normally on the, on, on the north side. And uh, the Discovery Channel was uh, filming for season three of their Everest uh, reality series on this side. And then, um, yeah, Russ, R Russell Bryce's uh, base camp was totally different. He had all yellow tents that were about uh, about a half a mile away, further away from the icefall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his own base camp unto itself. He had another camp down farther too. Down yeah, that was between uh, Ningboche and uh, Dugla. Yeah, that was. Uh, they went. To, yeah, that, they they went to uh, do a just a training climb, uh, a training climb, like a acclimatization climb. And got away from base camp. Yeah, I believe they would. Instead of going up to the higher camps on Everest, they they climbed this other mountain as their acclimatization. Oh, okay. So 
so that you know this is this is one of the things that I like <clears throat> is that uh, everyone thinks that base camp you know especially from the you know certainly no I don't mean to you know down talk the discovery series but uh, watching season three and all a bunch of you did but the time was compressed in such a drastic manner <laughs> so someone would say oh you know I'm up at you know camp two I can't go any higher I'm gonna head down and then you know five minutes later they're at base camp leaving to go home and that just is not how it happens but uh, you actually get a lot of time just to hang out and down the there Steve and John see John in the red hat um, just hanging out and people also think that it's absolutely freezing during the day up at, at base camp and it certainly is cold at night but during the day it's you know you could almost at times be just wearing a t-shirt a uh, short sleeve t-shirt because uh, it really does get warm in the sun as long as there's no wind yeah so this is one of my 360 degree pans and of course not totally uh, being thinking straight I forgot to get out of the shot. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Oops. I should have walked. I should have walked around the camera. That is funny. So here, I got behind the camera, and then here, I'll continue on back to Pomori. But, oh. <laughs> but yeah, you can see just how really different this is. And then the nor north side, the north side has that huge uh, terminal moraine, and then it's just all flat and half a mile wide. Um, and stuff that the the south side is just complete a completely different world yet we're so close really interesting seeing seeing the skyline you know the ridge that separates tibet and nepal and i i recognized it but it was in reverse in in, in many ways because i was looking at from the other side and it was very cool to be able to you know recognize certain peaks and everything that i had stared at endlessly from the north side and to see them now the other side from south. That was a real thrill for me. But even in this footage here, you just, you, you, you can't really tell the scale. It's just, everything is wacky. Like the the mountain in the in the background there might be really far away <laughs> to that tent where it looks like it's just behind that tent. Yeah, we're pretty much surrounded on three of the four sides by just massive mountains. You, you, you may say the tallest in the world. <laughs> you may say that, yes. And you may be correct. <laughs> There's one of those great uh, boulders on top of an ice pedestal right in front of, on the, you know, beyond John there. And we'll see, <laughs> we'll, I've got some really good close-up footage of an absolutely massive one that you walk by coming into or going out of base camp. So we'll see that another episode or two. So when you're in the uh, in that mountain hardware tent, it's got some kind of foam on the floor. Is it still pretty lumpy from the rocks underneath? It was great. Really comfortable. <laughs> so no, not very lumpy. <laughs> but they clear it out. Ew. So here, here's Cheery. And he's the guy who brought the battery. And that's why I bring the battery here. So there, the, we're going to charge over there. Yeah? So they're bringing the so car battery up just to charge it and then bring it back down. It took him 45 minutes to get here. Well, you already you yeah, brought, you yeah. brought it up? Yeah. Oh, man. I left the man at Gulakshay. I like it's the 945. <laughs> <laughs> what a brat. <laughs> Why did it take you guys so long? I don't even know if I could do that in my own, at my own altitude. That's amazing. Yeah. With yeah. a battery in your back. <laughs> yeah, no way. Okay. Did they, were they able to use it at all? Yeah. Did they use it for a long time? Oh, I just pour, pour out some things in the ages. Yeah. Just yesterday. Least, yeah. I talked over, but I think the battery was 17 kilos. Yes, so that's a. It was, 30, it was difficult 40, in Gorek Shep to battery. <laughs> yeah, it was difficult in Gorek Shep to push that battery around on the floor, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he just carries it straight up, and you know, carrying a car battery is not exactly the easiest thing to do, even if you're just carrying it from one, you know, from 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 in front of your car to into your car. 
and he carries up all, all over that trail and everything, so. This year we're about to see a little bit of a time lapse um, that I shot. I think I kind of ramp up the speed here in a second and start seeing the perflets fluttering faster, but um, yeah, I think he probably just put it in a uh, woven uh, reed basket, which is what most of the porters carry everything in, threw it on his back, and then just started going. And these guys are just, I mean, <laughs> you, you hear us say again and again just how absolutely amazed we are by by them. and. It's, um, like, for him to be able to take that car battery up in 45 minutes is one amazing feat. But then he gets up there and he's still his, his regular old happy self and just smiling and laughing and happy to be up there. Happy to have done that for us and, you know, not like, man, I can't believe how tired I am of taking that stupid car battery up for those clients. Just that kind of stuff. You know, I don't speak the the... I don't speak the languages out there, but uh, I don't believe that really ever comes to mind out there. Maybe they maybe they say a little bit of that stuff to each other, but it's got to be few and far between, at least with our group, right, guys? Because we were such a great group. Um, but I mean, just he, just such a nice guy, and you know, it's always always ready with a smile the entire time. It's very, very I always enjoyed seeing him and Mingmar in the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep, when they come yeah, when they come to your tents with uh, the the coffee right. and tea service. Morning. Yep. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> Washer. Tea? Coffee. Morning. Coffee. Washer. Tea. Coffee. coffee. <laughs> yep, that was cheery. <laughs> but you know, I, you know, I I mentioned it in in um this episode that it's you know I, I I love all these dramatic vistas I love it was really cool seeing the the ice fall which is so historic and you know you, everyone even even many people in the general public know about the ice fall um, but uh, it was you know the, the things that are most important to me are the little personal interactions between people and just the little moments and I know I've spoken with some other people who have tracked and yeah some of their favorite times were just uh, the wake-up calls <laughs> even though you know you won't think waking up is the best thing in the world to do most but memorable <laughs> it was just so friendly and just so you know they they actually cared about us and they were you know they were taking really good care of us it wasn't um, simply because we were paying them to be there you know like they they form an attachment with all the clients that are really nice and uh some of them last forever i know chris marquardt you and i some of our attachments to these guys will last probably yes. the rest of our lives um, absolutely on on a very regular basis so those things thanks a lot guys i'm glad to have you on and i'm glad to, uh, again those of you who weren't there i'm glad you joined in um uh, what we will probably see next week will primarily be footage of me by myself. I stayed up there so I could kind of hang out with, with my friend Dawa and, and film some more of him cooking and stuff, so it might be pretty interesting. Yeah, some of you might think, okay, we got to Everest and uh, we'll be going down soon that the show is over. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, not at all. I think yeah, uh, stuff coming up. Technically, we are just past the middle of the footage that I shot. Uh, it's hard to tell whether how quickly that will go. Um, some some of the footage I use every bit of it. Some of it I you know edit a lot, but we still have many more episodes. And I think some of the some of the neatest neatest moments on the entire trip happened on the way down. And uh, I do believe I do a strip tease at some point. So there's that to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> so another one. <laughs> another one. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. And uh, we will see and hear from you guys all next week. So bye. Sure. Bye. 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 The rest of Everest is downloaded all over the world every day, and watching the show has become a part of many people's weekly routine. The show will always be free to download, but it's by no means free to produce. Please help me cover my costs by making a small monthly or one-time donation from the right sidebar on my website, and in return I'll give you some cool bonus materials. A donation of any amount will grant you access to some interesting video content, including high-definition versions of several podcast episodes a one-time donation of $25 or more, or any of the monthly donation options will additionally grant you access to a downloadable version of the film Everest The Other Side, which episodes 1 to 61 are based on. I really cannot express how vital these donations are, and if you've made a donation, thank you so much. As always, our announcer is Marlon May, and our music is provided by Wendy Wu. Check her out at wendywu.com. Thanks so much, everyone, and we'll see you next week.
Thank you for watching The Rest of Everest. For more information on the expedition, please visit therestofeverest.com.